Dyed proteins and polysaccharides are useful substrates for the specific measurement of endo-acting enzyme activity in crude plant extracts or industrial enzyme preparations. Azocasein, a universal substrate for the measurement of endoprotease, is prepared by dyeing casein with sulfonylic acid. Optimization of the dyeing is essential to obtain maximal substrate sensitivity. This is a soluble substrate that readily dissolves in buffer solutions and in this form is stable for several weeks at 4 degrees Celsius. Megazyme's azocasein forms the basis of a simple to use, sensitive and universally applicable assay for endoprotease. In azocasein, sulfonylic acid is attached to casein to an optimal degree for enzyme activity and assay sensitivity. Endoproteases such as papain hydrolyze the dyed casein, producing smaller dyed fragments which remain in solution on addition of 5% trichloroacetic acid. The non-hydrolyzed azocasein precipitates from solution upon addition of the TCA and is removed by centrifugation. The color of the supernatant solution is measured at 440 nanometers, and this color is directly proportional to the level of the specific endoprotease activity in tyrosine units. The activity is calculated by reference to a standard curve for the particular endoprotease or by reference to a specific regression equation. Azocasein is supplied as a bright orange lyophilized powder. This powder rapidly dissolves in acid buffer. Azocasein supplied by Megzyme is optimized to give maximum sensitivity and, for most proteases, a linear reaction curve between 0.1 and 1 absorbance units. This substrate has a fourfold higher sensitivity than products supplied by other companies. Azocasein can be used to assay the activity of all endoproteases that are active on casein. Prior to commencing the assay, prepare the required additional reagents as described in the kit assay protocol. Add 96 milliliters of 100 millimolar sodium phosphate buffer into a 200 milliliter beaker on a hot plate stirrer. Heat to approximately 70 degrees Celsius with vigorous stirring. Weigh out two grams of azocasein substrate on an analytical balance and add to the vigorously stirring buffer solution. Vigorously stir the suspension on the magnetic stirrer until the substrate is completely dissolved, approximately 3 minutes. Adjust the volume of the solution to 100 milliliters with 100 millimolar sodium phosphate buffer using a graduated cylinder. For storage purposes, transfer the solution to a 100 milliliter duran. Add two drops of toluene before sealing the duran. For powdered samples, weigh one gram of powder enzyme into a weigh boat and record the exact weight. Add 50 milliliters of buffer to a 100 milliliter beaker, which contains a stir bar. While stirring, add the one gram of powdered enzyme and stir until the powder completely dissolves or is completely dispersed, approximately 15 minutes. Papain, bromelain and physin, which are thiol proteases, are extracted and diluted in buffer B, pH 7, which contains cysteine. Trypsin, chymotrypsin and proteinase K are extracted and diluted in buffer A, pH 7, which does not contain cysteine. Subtilicin A is extracted and diluted in buffer C, pH 8, which does not contain cysteine. Clarify the solution or suspension by filtrating through a Wattman No. 1 filter paper into a 100 ml Durand bottle. Alternatively, centrifuge an aliquot of the solution at approximately 3000 RPM for 10 minutes in a bench centrifuge. This is termed the original extract. 
Perform 10 fold dilutions of this extract by adding 1 ml of the original extract to 9 ml of buffer A, B or C in a suitably sized test tube and mix by inversion or on a vortex mixer. Repeat this process of 10 fold dilution until a concentration of enzymes suitable for assay is achieved. For liquid samples, using a positive displacement dispenser, add 1 ml of liquid enzyme sample to approximately 40 ml of buffer A, B or C in a 50 ml volumetric flask and adjust to volume. Kappa mix thoroughly by inversion. If the solution is turbid, clarify by filtrating an aliquot through Wattman No. 1 filter paper or by centrifugation at 3000 rpm for 10 minutes. This is the original extract. Perform 10 fold dilutions of this extract by adding 1 ml of the original extract to 9 ml of buffer A, B or C in a suitably sized test tube. and mix by inversion or on a vortex mixer. Repeat this process of 10 fold dilution until a concentration of enzymes suitable for assay is achieved. As the azocasein substrate is quite viscous, use a positive displacement dispenser to transfer 1 ml aliquots of azocasein solution directly to the bottom of 16 by 160 mm glass test tubes in duplicate. Place the tubes along with the prepared enzyme solutions into a water bath at 40 degrees Celsius for approximately 5 minutes to equilibrate. Initiate the reaction by adding 1 ml of the pre-equilibrated and suitably diluted enzyme solution to the tubes contain an azocasein solution. Stir on a vortex mixer for a few seconds and then incubate the tubes for exactly 10 minutes. Initiate the incubations at approximately 10 second intervals and ensure all reactions are incubated for exactly 10 minutes before terminating the reaction. After exactly 10 minutes from addition of the enzyme to each tube, Terminate the reactions by adding 6 ml of 5% TCA solution, the precipitant solution, to each tube and immediately vigorously stir the tube on a vortex mixer for a few seconds. Vigorously stirring the contents of the reaction tubes is absolutely essential to ensure that complete and uniform precipitation of the non-hydrolyzed azocasein occurs. Allow the reaction tubes to equilibrate to room temperature for approximately 5 minutes. Prepare the reaction blanks by adding 1 ml of the enzyme preparation to label tubes. Then add 6 ml of the precipitant solution and mix thoroughly. This inactivates the enzyme. Then add 1 ml of the azocasein substrate solution. And vigorously stir the tube contents on a vortex mixer. Mix the tube contents of the reaction and blank tubes once more prior to filtering the contents through Wattman No. 1 filter paper. Alternatively, centrifuge the tube contents.
Remove all tubes carefully from the centrifuge. If the tubes contain some particles of vasocasein as floating particles, it will be important to decant the supernatant solutions carefully. The supernatant solutions of the reaction blanks are essentially colourless. Measure the absorbance of all filtrates or supernatants of reaction solutions at 440 nanometers against the reaction blank. The amount of colour in the sample solutions is directly proportional to endoprotease activity. Endoprotease activity as milliunits per assay is determined from the absorbance values by reference to the standard curve or regression equation for the particular protease. These curves and regression equations for a range of endoproteases are supplied in the data booklet. Separate standard curves and regression equations are required for each lot of vasocasein. For this reason, Megzyme makes a very large amounts of a particular lot. To calculate activity as units per milliliter or units per gram of original preparation, the calculations as described in the data booklet are employed. The determined activity in milliunits per assay is multiplied by the extraction volume, 50, which is 1 gram or 1 milliliter of sample is extracted in 50 milliliters of buffer. If the sample extract was diluted further, then this dilution factor is added. Finally, the values obtained are divided by 1000 to convert from milliunits to units.